So today we've got the 12 valve in the truck hooked up to the Carrot Custom mounts. Um, we got our ZF6. We picked it up on Facebook Marketplace. Um, so I got 108, 106,000 miles. Um, got pulled it and put it in automatic, so it was a really good find. Um, we paid a little bit less than the ASCII price. Generally, I saw them for about 4,000. Uh, we only paid two for this. We have the uh, Mike Fuchs 12 valve to ZF6 adapter plate. Um, this hooks to 6O and up ZF6s, and then you run the 6O or 64 starter with a Luck 300 flywheel, and then you just get the ZF6 clutch for a, like a F350 or 250. So we're gonna get it all bolted in, torqued down. I couldn't really find a torque setting on it. It's anywhere from 30 to 60 foot pounds, so we're just gonna put 60 foot pounds on it, Loctite. Um, we're just gonna mock everything up. Yes, we're gonna paint the motor, and then we're gonna, you can see right in here, the fluid from the seal, so we're gonna get this whole transmission resealed, so it'll basically be like a brand new transmission. Of course, we're gonna put a new luck clutch and flywheel. All right, so we've got the adapter plate bolted on now. It comes with these two alignment pins and all the bolts to hook it to the block. So one of the alignment pins goes right here. Of course, it's just the line up the transmission and the other one goes right here. So then we're just going to pick up the transmission on the transmission jack, hopefully, and get it all slide, slid in and bolted in. And then we're gonna work on getting the cross member set up. The well, only thing we have left really this major things to get is a dually axle, 05 and up, and a MP271 transfer case is what we want to run. That's going to be the manual shift to transfer case, so it'll kind of keep the old school technology and, and look going on with this truck while still having the modern frame, axles, and drivetrain. All right, so we tried to use the transmission jack. This transmission is just a little too long for it. You really need two of them, and it's kind of it was kind of precariously tipping back and forth. So we went with the good old John Deere patented transmission hoist. So we'll get it chained up here and get it slid onto the adapter and the dowel pins and get it all in place. Right about here is where I realized the factory location for the cross member isn't going to work and where we needed to slide it back to mount it is exactly where I had the frame shortened so it's got those trusses in there. doing is we had to get two of the cross members for f350 i'm pretty sure 99 and 2010 are all the same um, but they've got these slots for the transmission uh, mount but because we have the frame shortened to 165 and a half the trusses that were welded into the uh, frame go right of course where this is supposed to go so what we're doing is we cut this end off of this cross member and i got another one 
we're trimming the this little stand edge off right here. We're gonna inlay it on the underside of here, cleaned all the dirt out of here, weld it up so hopefully it'll be a little bit stronger than the factory one, but it'll also work for our application. And then we'll go from there. So we had to do a little change of plans. We're gonna shorten this up and cut it off right here. And then we're gonna, John Michael's gonna burn it in and we're gonna take this slotted hole and lay it back over these other slots and burn it back in. That way we don't have to re-drill this. And if we put it on there and then drilled it, it would basically ruin all of its structural integrity. So we're gonna cut it off and then we're just gonna weld this back in separately to give a little extra beef right here. And then we're gonna to have to come in here with some straps and strap it because we cut it a little bit too short. So we'll strap it and it'll be good. Yeah. We let John Michael get it tacked in. We're gonna slide in here and just check, make sure everything looks like it wanted to. It does, so we're gonna let John Michael finish welding it up, and then we're gonna drill some holes in the frame and go ahead and get it mounted up like we need it to be. You can see in the background, I'm working on cleaning off this BMW hitch we picked up from the junkyard. 200 bucks for a 600 dollar hitch, so we're gonna clean it up and repaint it. So what we did is we cut this piece off down here on the cross member. So we got that off, took both sides of this right here so that it'll saddle on the frame. We're waiting on the transmission bushing to come in this afternoon. We'll get it mounted up. Um, but you can see right here, what we did is we cut the shoulder off of this one, trimmed it down. We got John Michael to weld it in here. Um, we put the bracing in right there. And then we cut this piece off because the slots wouldn't line up and welded it back in here just to give it a little bit of extra support. But that's how you make a cross member for a Cummins with a ZF6 on a Ford frame with a square body. We didn't do anything really special for the paint. We just went with some Rust-Oleum brown primer and then I got some silver for the gooseneck hitch. I'm not too happy with it. It's super sparkly, so hopefully that's gonna wear off after a while. And then we're just gonna spray paint the cross member black.
see right here, I got my father-in-law over at the house for Christmas. We're gonna go ahead and mark this cross member. We're gonna ahead and drill it. We're gonna drill with a small drill bit and then we're gonna run half inch bolts. Fortunately, you're doing something like this, you wanna keep it lubricated. And you can see we're putting the gooseneck hitch in right here. Um, it's 120 foot pounds on those. I gotta get a bigger socket and we'll get that torqued down and we'll be ready to go.